Back everyone, the fight to release the leader of the killer whale from the Miami Sea Aquarium is once again stepping into high gear with a Washington State Native American tribe now claiming their treaty rights actually extend to Lolita herself. But at 52 years old, the second oldest orca in captivity, is it too late and too risky to move her? Louis Aguirre is live at the Miami Sea Aquarium after returning from Washington where he got a close up look at the plan to bring her home. Louis. Lori Calvin, we begin with breaking news. Word out of Washington State that the governor will soon sign an executive order further protecting the orcas of Washington State, Puget Sound, where Lolita was taken 47 years ago. Not just that, he's also named the Lumi tribe as members of this task force, of this task force that is now in charge of protecting these orcas. We've been talking about the Lummies for the past several days now. The Lummies are now in this fight to free Lolita from the aquarium and take her back home to Washington State, this $3.3 million plan that, yes, has its risks, but many scientists now agree it could actually work. On a chilly March morning, I take to the Salish Sea on this fishing boat with members of the Lummi tribe bound for Orcas Island. The native people of this territory have now joined the quest to bring Lolita the killer whale back to these waters where she was taken from her family 47 years ago and sold to the Miami Seaquarium. We've stolen her life from her. The Lummies are taking me to what they say will be Lolita's new home, a sea pen where they believe she can finally begin to live the life that should have been hers, a special place that once belonged to their ancestors. If you look really close, you can see layers of shells. And when you look back in, in history, that's where our ancestors put all the food and the clams that we gathered. Yeah, now. A game changer for marine biologist and orca expert Ken Balcom, who's been fighting for 25 years to bring Lolita back. In the Lummies, he's found a powerful new ally. First of all, they do have a, a legal right. This is, this is part of a treaty that was signed years ago. The treaty gives the Lummies the right to protect their fish and coastal lands. The salmon are disappearing, global warming, Pollution and shipping congestion have wreaked havoc on this delicate ecosystem. And now the orcas who live here, the southern residents, are in danger. Lolita is part of the plan to save them and the Salish Sea. She is, after all, a star. And the world will be watching. If we don't bring this attention to the repair of this ecosystem, we've lost the Salish Sea. And the orcas. And the orcas, and the eagles, and the salmon and the people, ultimately. For Balcom and the Lummies, this plan has to work. The first step is to get her out of this aquarium and here to Orcas Island. This is it, this is perfect place. Why is this the perfect place? Well, it's deep water, it's got a barrier island over there, it's got a nice embayment that we can pen off. We can have a small pen in here to start with and then open up to a larger one and then open up to the whole East Sound. Not just that, her family, the Elpod, has been known to travel very near to these waters in the summer when the salmon are running and they come here to feed. It also comes with room service. Well, for one thing, this is a salmon hatchery. We produce thousands of salmon here. Seattle real estate developer Jim Youngren built this hatchery 40 years ago to help repopulate these fish depleted waters with wild Chinook salmon. These days, Youngren's little experiment releases 750,000 salmon a year back into the sea. We can grow salmon and she can relearn re to feed on live salmon. But will it work? We asked someone with no horse in this race. What is best for this particular animal, in your opinion? In my opinion, what's best for the particular animal is to allow her to continue to live as she has. Biology professor and marine mammal expert Douglas Wartsock thinks it best Lolita stay in this aquarium. He says the chances are slim that the 52-year-old Lolita could ever survive as a wild orca, and the transport from Miami to Bellingham, a seven-hour flight, would be risky. The uh, track record of animals who have been in captivity and have been freed has not been good. They, they, they usually die fairly quickly. But the plan is not to free her. We don't want to freak her out by all of a sudden dropping her in the water, as some people propose. Right. The idea is to have just at least as much care as she gets in Miami. And that's something even Professor Wartsock says may give Lolita a better life, if 
they can get her here safely. It would probably be a good thing for her in the sense that there would be greater space. I mean, the tank she's in is clearly too small. No, no, I don't think anyone questions that. She doesn't belong in a little small pool in Miami. This is her home. Back at the reservation, Master Carver, James Jewell, is working on a new totem pole. You know, when we start cutting into it. When he's finished, it'll depict a mighty female orca making her way back home. He plans to tour the country with it to tell the world the story of Lolita, an ending that so far has yet to be written. Look, we can do this in a good way or a bad way. Good way is we make you a hero. Bad way, uh, we bring in all our alliances and all our allies and we make you a, a villain. And I can tell you that right now, a delegation from the Lummi Nation is in Miami tonight in the Lucy Aquarium refuses to meet with them. They will be holding a news conference tomorrow to discuss where they go from here, what the plan will be. We will be at that news conference and we will bring that to you when it happens. Lori and Calvin. And Louie, you were talking about the risks of moving Lolita at 52 years old, that she might not survive mm -hmm. the transport. But if she did, I mean, how long could she live? Well, I mean, orcas can live potentially in the wild anywhere from 50 to 80 years old. They've also been known to live as, as long as 100 years old. And I asked Ken Balcom that very same question. He loves these animals. He's dedicated his life to studying them. And he says that he knows how endangered the orcas are. The last thing he would want to do is endanger another one. If he thought that Lolita could not survive this transport and relocation, he would not want to put her life at risk. He doesn't think it's worth it, but this is an extraordinary animal we're talking about. She's lived 47 years in captivity, and that is something to note. We have Ken's detailed plan as to how he plans to relocate Lolita, available on our website, local10.com. Speaking of extraordinary, extraordinary.